What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and Cloudflare is added again. Bad ass new feature. So, speeding up HTTPS and HTTP3 negotiation with DNS guys. So, so we have this problem guys. We have discussed this many 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 time in this channel. So, you are a browser and you want to go to HusseinNasser.com or, or Google.com, right? There are two protocols. There's HTTP and there's HTTPS, the encrypted one, which, which you need to do a TLS on top of that, right? There are two different ports. This is port 80, this is port 443 most of the time. So now, how do you know what the server supports? Can you assume that the server always support HTTPS and always connect with 443? You can. HTTPS anywhere does that. That's the extension. It just always connect with that. With, 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 with to port 443, establish the TCP connection with port 443, and then establish the TLS connection on top of that, and then go through uh, its merry way. Right? However, browsers unfortunately do not do that. What do they do? What do browsers do today? Browsers unfortunately know that since we're connected to a web, we know that the web is going to support unencrypted HTTP. This is 20 years or more than that of, 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 of stuff over the internet. So we cannot break backward compatibility, unfortunately. That's life. So what the browser does, and, 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 and this article actually nicely explains it. There's this, the, where, where is this GIF or GIF or, or whatever you want to call it. See, when, you, when they, they're going uh, for the podcast lesson and they're typing blog.cloudflare.com and hitting enter, and for a fraction of a second, you can see the, the un, unsecure icon and then followed by a secure icon. What happened here? What happened here is the browser actually established a TCP connection with the, this, first of all, it does a DNS and gets the IP address and then establish a TCP connection on port 80 because that's, that's what it needs to know. The only thing I know that this destination definitely supports HTTP. So that's the, it does that first. And then the server says, okay, let's establish the TCP connection and then the client, the browser says, okay, get request slash index.html or whatever. And the server will say, okay, not quite, right? I want you to redirect 301, I think that's the HTTP status code, to this site instead, HTTPS. And then the server will say, oh, okay, you should have told me that to, to start with HTTPS, but Never mind, let me close the TCP connection that I just opened on port 80. Let me open a new one on port 443 and let me uh, start the TLS because TLS, right? Uh, we talked about that. Check out this video. Now, uh, exchange the keys between me and the server and, and then do all that stuff and, and then send my get request. Even that, it's a little bit nuanced, but that's what the browser does. The browser have a hack today to avoid this extra round trip to send a, a plain text HTTP. We talked about that, that so many times. That's bad. Why is it bad? Because it's slow first. The second reason it's bad to send a plain text HTTP is because of uh, SSL stripping and, and uh, downgrade attacks. And, and you can do so much stuff. Anyone in, intercepting in the middle and, and the author of the blog did a great job illustrating that, which, which I talked about many, many times in this channel. It will basically intercept the traffic and, and reply back with a completely something else because it's unencrypted. Anyone in the middle, in the route, can actually look and can, can respond with something else. So that's what we're doing today, right? I'm warming up to the, to the content of this blog, guys, but, but we need to discuss all that stuff. Some, so much problems that we don't know about so we need to discuss it so that's the problem what did the browsers do what hack carry did the browsers do there's something called hsts i talked about it here check out the video right here and 
HSTS for, stands for HTTP Strict Transport Security, which is 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 merely a preloaded list in the browsers for sites that do support HTTPS, like Google, like Yahoo, and it's just preloaded with the with the browser. So now, if you go to Google.com and hit enter, or www.google.com and hit enter. The browser will look, okay, what Google.com, does this support HTTPS? Yes, we know this, a fact. And it's going to start immediately by requesting for port 443. It will establish the TCP connection in port 443 and establish the TLS connection and then does send the GET request as a result, which is great. However, if your website happened not to be in this list, tough luck we still need to send a plain text HTTP request first. That means in order to do that, we need to establish a TCP connection with port 80 on your server. That's We have to do this. And then we have to close it because you got it. Oh, no, don't go here, sir. Go to this HTTPS plus plus. Thank you so much. Yeah. I don't know why your server sounds like that, but sure. Yeah, so... So... In order to populate this list, if preloaded, so we have HTTPS headers on the server on the back end, you can set that and add a header that tells you on the client that said, hey, please update my site to be in the HTTPS list so that in future, please, for the next year or two years or three months, please communicate with me in HTTPS. That's what we do. Pretty neat, right? Pretty neat. But we still have this problem because we had to, if, 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 if the browser's list is not updated, we had to do this HTTP first. That's, that's another problem. A third problem is with the protocol itself, guys. Right? So we know it's HTTP, right? What, what protocol are you talking about, Jose? I'm talking about the actual protocol uh, specification whether not http or https which is the scheme i'm talking about the protocol which is http 11 or http 2 how do you know that the server supports http 2 we figured this out with alpn application layer protocol negotiation but guess what when is alpn happening alpn happens during the tls handshake which is because we proved it, HTTP2 has to happen in HTTPS schemes, which is 443 connection, which is secure connection only. Anything HTTP2, plain text, we try not to support. Browsers, I don't think they support it because it's bad. Uh, you can do smuggling and ju someone just discovered that you can do HTTP2 uh, clear text smuggling, which is so bad. I'm going to reference the video here if you want to learn more about it. Security researcher found that. So don't use HTTP2 over clear text. Bad, 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 bad. So what do we do? We tell during the, first of all, so I establish with 443 TCP connection, right? And now I do a TLS client hello and say, hey, server, I support HTTP1, H1, and H2 as well. So if you just support H2, please, let's communicate with H2. I prefer this. So if the server responds back with, okay, I accepted in the TLS server hello, it was going to say, yo, let's connect in H2. Sweet, sweet, sweet stuff. So that, there's no problem with that, right? Because we established the TCP. But there are layers and layers of communication. So this is, this is another problem right we had to do this tls to find out let's come to the http3 another problem that people still figuring out of it we didn't make a video on http3 but i can talk a little bit about it what's the problem with http3 http3 is built on quick which is built on udp that's a completely different protocol than tcp right so now if i want to establish an HTTP3 connection with the server, how would I know that the server supports HTTP3? That's even lower layer, right? It's, it's not HTTP versus HTTPS. HTTP3 is always HTTPS, it's going to be, right? 
but I don't know how the server supports it or not. Why? I'm telling. I'm gonna tell you why. Can that's the first question I ask. It's like, hey, just put it in the ALPN TLS. Hello, you can't do that. Why? Because TLS HTTP three is not on top of TCP. Because and 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 ALPN is a TLS extension that is designed to be put on top of TCP. That's what we know. TLS one point three, which is on top of TTP. So how do you do it? If, if you do this, if you do, hey, let's do a TCP connection on port 443, and then let's do a TLS hello, and I'm going to support H3, you're going to turn around and close the connection if the server supports HTTP3 because your whole communication is wrong. You should not communicate with me in HTTP, uh, on, on, on TCP. You have to con establish a quick connection. So how do we tell this? How do we know that the server supports the TC, uh, TLS? How do you know? that the server supports HTTP2? How do I know that the server supports HTTP3? How do I know that the server supports HTTPS? What happens before I establish a TCP connection? And that's when where this block comes in handy. DNS happens before all this stinking stuff. Everything happened before. Before DNS happens before every single thing that we talked about. So if the DNS server i.e. Cloudflare or others, can tell us, by the way, I want to go to google.com. Give me the IP address of google.com. And by the way, tell me what services does, 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 uh, does this IP address support? And that's what they added. They added something called HTTPS record and SVCB record. I don't know what the B stands for. This basically tells you that, hey, the IP address you just retrieved actually supports HTTPS. So don't bother sending, establish a connection directly to HTTP uh, the, to the port 80 and then send a get and then wait a while for, for the redirect. Don't do that. Immediately, immediately connect through HTTPS on port 443. Mind blown. I have never thought about this simple solution ever. I was like stuck with HTTPS and all this hackeries that we do. This is genius because you're gonna do DNS, right? This is genius. Cloudflare, I love it. I love it. I love it. And we can optionally add service record that says, by the way, wait a second, we also support HTTP3. Mind blown. Mind blown. So now, when you get this piece of information, you know that the server supports HTTP3, you will immediately, when you, instead of establishing a TCP connection, you're gonna establish a quick connection immediately because you know that the server supports it. Why, how? Because we just did a DNS. Now, are there any problems with this? I bet there will be. Because how, how, how often do you know that the, there must be a date because like, uh, what if you drop support for HTTP3? What if UDP is not supported on, on your, on your inter-network between you and the server? Firewalls block UDP and left and right. So that's what Quick has, has a way to downgrade to a TCP connection. I, d I don't know how that happens exactly. Is it HTTP3 on top of TCP or is it just pure HTTP2. I think it's pure HTTP2. I might be wrong about that, uh, which is way, way simpler, right? So now, once you know, you, you can essentially just... Uh, the DNS can also afford, uh, uh, advertise that, hey, I support also HTTP2. I don't know what's the benefit of that, to be honest, because if I know that it's about HTTP2, I still need to do the TCP connection on port 443. That's going to definitely saves me one TCP connection, three-way handshake, and, 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 and a close, right? That, that, that is great, right? I know that uh, the, 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 the browser actually does a race and, and establish this in parallel and try to do things, right, kind of race things, but still, right? You know how Chrome 
Chrome has like uses like 100% of CPU because all this, all this is garbage that it does. Like, oh, let's be uh, should I open TCP close, open close. And, and if it's HTTP 1.1, it's all, it's worse because it has to open six, 10 TCP connection to do pipelining, not pipelining, or multiplexing, not really called multiplexing, but, but parallel requests, right? It is, it is, it is it, the web is a mess, guys, the web is a mess, but I'm just fascinated by this article. I'm going to reference it below. Go check it out. It is fascinating, right? It, it tells you all this information that we talked about here, right? And then uh, we forgot to, oh, almost forgot that, ESNI, right? We talked about ESNI in this channel, right? Check out the video. It's just for free, you're gonna know, hey, if I support ESNI, which is encrypted server name indication, here's the key for the server, at least the, the, the part, the Diffie-Hillman public part of the server. So you go ahead and, and encrypt your your TLS extensions with this so that nobody can in the middle can actually know where you're going because we still know ISP is still know where you're going even if DOH is encrypted or DOT right the DNS queries are encrypted so you don't know the ISPs are blind from that the server name indication TLS extension is clear text and people people government everybody is just reading that and and finding where you want to go and as a result logging you so isps governments uh know all that and that's why china is actually blocking esni altogether russia is also i think they, they are about to block esni and, and because it, they're blind they're blind once this technology is installed they are literally blind so yeah pretty neat stuff guys and and uh I gotta, I gotta hand it to Cloudflare. They're, they're doing great job, great, cool engineering. Alessandro, thank you for this amazing article. Again, guys, I'm gonna reference it below. Thank you for checking out this video slash podcast. If you wanna listen to this on podcast, I'm gonna reference below. You can listen to this on the podcast on Spotify, on uh, Anchor, pretty much everywhere, and uh, obviously on YouTube as well. So, love you so much. Thank you for watching, listening. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.